I was uh, meeting with a guy that <clears throat> pastors in another state uh, this last week and just talking about changes and everything going on. <clears throat> and it was, as I was telling him about getting back together, which we started doing a couple weeks ago um, on Sunday mornings, I was just telling him about what was happening to me personally with going around the room and just seeing the people that I love. And uh, I was telling him about <clears throat> one in particular uh, last week, Janet Kanab, who's not here this morning, but Janet, who uh, <clears throat> she like raised our kids in, in, as it relates to the church. She did, she watched them when they were babies all the way up, our three boys. And that's been a few years ago. <clears throat> and, uh, I've known her for almost 40 years and, and she's been through some stuff, lost her husband this last year. She's been through some really hard stuff and she's going through, she, you know, she's, um, some health struggles and other things, but she was just here and glad to be here. And I was like, Oh my gosh, if that doesn't bring joy to my heart, then there's something wrong with me. So anyway, even I'm saying that because looking around this morning at the different ones of you, I'm just so grateful. What's up, T? <laughs> anyway, okay. So we're going to take just a moment now. Get your phone out. We're going to take 30 seconds to text somebody and just... So I'm going to just want to get in the habit of doing this every week during service, whether you're watching now or you're, you're, you're here or you're watching online at another time, get your phone out, text somebody. Let's just pray one moment. Lord, bring to mind somebody that needs some encouragement this morning. And here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Uh, this is a little sample text. Can you bring that back up? Just like, Grace and peace. Bless you, Mark. You might not want to say Mark if it's not Mark. Um, whoever it is. But just something like that. Just grace and peace to you. And uh, we're going to, I think, play music for 30 seconds while you text. Okay? So just reach out to somebody. And maybe even somebody here from SHV that's not here this morning um, that you know. Just ask God to bring somebody to mind. Text somebody that needs encouragement. And you can word it differently. You can word it however you want. But let's reach out and bless. All right, now you can turn your phone over and off and for the rest of this time and then check back, see if they gave you some grace and peace back. Psalm 107, verse one says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north 
and from the south. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can you just say that with me? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. One more time. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Today we're starting our 40 days of redemption. We're going to spend these next several weeks looking at this theme of redemption. This will be our focus leading up to Advent. Redemption is about rescue, deliverance, and hope, and really freedom from anything that enslaves you, anything that defines you, which is contrary to God's intended purpose. Redemption speaks of restoration. And I think it's especially important in this time during the pandemic because redemption is and has been the message of Jesus to people whenever they're in exile. And exile is a forced absence from the place that you belong, which we're all experiencing in some degree. So my prayer is during these days leading up and through Thanksgiving that you would um, grab hold of something of the meaning and impact of redemption and, and every day there would be something of you celebrating Redemption, even if you're in process in an area, which we all are, of being redeemed. So I want to go a little bit deeper into it, and we're going to spend our time primarily in Psalm 107. Um, so during this time, to pray about it, to study scriptures about it, do searches on the word redeem or redemption, study stories of redemption throughout the scripture, and then being able to fill in the blank in your own life. I'm being redeemed from whatever it is in my life. I'm being redeemed from my wife uh, came home one day this week and she, she, said, she said, man, you wouldn't believe today I'm driving down Parker Road and on one side, there, this whole line of big giant trucks with flags honking and waving. And, and then on the other side, she was driving the other direction. She said, I'm driving and the cars in front of me, people were flipping them off. And I thought, man, what a picture of what's going on today. And that's kind of a tame illustration compared to some. And I think the question is, how do we as followers of Jesus live as a redeemed people in times like this? One of the things that it just got me thinking about is that a true reflection of being like Jesus is how we treat people who vote differently than we do. I think it's good and healthy to have spirited disagreement and conversation. But without pride or treating people as though they're inferior or stupid, without personal attack and incivility, seeking to understand living and loving from a place of gratitude. And we're just not really used to navigating tension, right? I don't know about you, but it feels to me like here we are, uh, November 1st today. It feels like we're, I mean, we've been going, we've been on all sorts of horrific things the last six months. It's been quite a year. But to me, it feels right now like we're nearing the top of the roller coaster on that first, on another ride. And you know that feeling? Now, for me, it's different because... I have a problem with motion sickness, and so I hate roller coasters. I was remembering one time when I was little, my mom like forced me to go on a roller coaster with her in Wichita, Kansas. So you know it wasn't like a super amazing thriller roller coaster, but any roller coaster was too much for me. 
My mom, my mom told me we, before we got on this ride, she goes, I'll just tell you one thing, Craig. If, if you don't like it, you can, like, whatever. I said, like, punch you? She goes, yeah. This is not a great story because it ended with me gently striking my mother in the stomach. But we get we get on the roller coaster and it's like, you know, the and they and on this one there was a guy with an axe of this thing that was at the top of the roller coaster. And you're getting up there toward the top and I'm like, this is not going to be good. I mean, I seriously get nauseous and can throw up right in a swing. Anybody else have that? And the rest of you, how many of you despise people like that and go, just get a clue and toughen up? <clears throat> My sister still to this day texts me about anything to do with that kind of stuff and says, do you have any Dramamine nearby? You need some Dramamine? It just feels like, though, everything's even going to increase in terms of tension. And so I think it's important, rather than ignoring what's going on, looking in at how we as followers of Jesus can celebrate our redemption and realize we're part of a story that goes beyond what's going on currently. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So I'm going to give you just some different uh, definitions of redeem or redemption, and we're going to kind of go through this in an introductory way this morning and what this really meant in Psalm 107. And then we're just going to invite the Lord to um, come and do what he wants to do in bringing redemption into our lives. Thankfully, redemption isn't a one-time thing. Redemption, again, speaks of freedom. Literally, to redeem means to buy something back. It means to rescue. This is a central theme in all of the scripture. From the beginning, God created us. As men and women, we were given the freedom to choose, and we usurped God's authority. And as a result of our rebellion, brokenness entered into our lives in the very core of our DNA. Yet at the same time, God set redemption in motion right from the beginning. His heart and intention has always been to redeem all that was lost and broken and to restore it to beauty and to his intention. Simply put, we've all become, and we all are, slaves to sin and death. Slaves to rebellion. We all have something in us hardwired to usurp authority, to say, nah, my way's better, right? But Jesus said, the son of man didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. He was going to pay the ransom, to buy us back, if you will. What a powerful picture. Laying down his own life, the crucified God. That was the ransom. To lay claim to us, to rescue and restore us, and not just us, but all of creation. What a powerful picture. And I hope you get this, as I've been just kind of pondering this and going through it in my mind. It's just, um, redemption hasn't been a word that I, uh, it's not one that I use, uh, most people use in conversation just normally. It's not like redemption or redeem is a word that comes up very often. But the reality is that the only reason that I'm even alive or standing here today is because of redemption. What does that mean? Think of it this way. I find, I find this helpful is 
we're all enslaved to rebellion. There's something bent in the wrong direction in all of us, but we're also made in the image of God. So we have this mixture going on, right? Our hearts are restless and they're not going to find rest until they find that rest in God, right? There's something in all of us that longs to come to a place of rightness and rest, but we're enslaved and we can't get free on our own. You can't be, get free by trying to be a good person. And not only that, you've been created by God the Father and you belong to him. All of us belong to him. And yet because we're broken and have rebelled, we have another manager over our life. The devil, evil. And you find yourself, we find ourselves captive and doing things we don't want to do and not doing things we should do. But here's the beauty of it. Just like the prodigal son, at one point in time, and there has to be a starting point, we come to our senses and realize, hey, my father and my father's house, if I were to go to him, all would get sorted out. We're a little confused about what that might look like, but the reality is that to be redeemed means that we come to our senses, our eyes are opened by a work of God's spirit, and we're bought back. The price has already been paid. We, we then come back into family and find our rightful place in family. See, redemption is about more than just a theological term which means a lot of things that we may or may not connect with. The reality is that everyone in this room and everybody watching online, God has sent his son, the Redeemer, to buy you back from the devil and from bondage and from captivity, from exile. And every single day of your life, he wants to remind you that he is the Redeemer. And it means more than just having your sins forgiven. It means that you come back into your rightful place in the family. And so for some of you, you're like, I've never felt in the right place as it relates to family. I've never felt a part. I've never felt just a, a sense of peacefulness at being in the family that I'm in. Or maybe I used to, but I don't anymore. And here's the beauty of redemption is that Jesus supersedes all of that as well as all of the evil and the captivity. And he reaches in and he grabs you and he brings you in and says, you're now a part of my body, my family. You're adopted in to my family. You belong so fully and thoroughly and all throughout history who have looked for the Messiah and all who look to Jesus now belong. Redemption is so powerful. It's about belonging. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Here in Psalm 107, I love this psalm because it, it, this was written probably, most believe, around uh, 600 B.C., around the time of the Babylonian exile. And for those of you who are part of the Daniel series, that's what we were talking about back then, was what was going on in the Babylonian exile. And here's a little map we'll put up just to show you, kind of just give an idea of where do we have the little graphic of the map. So Jerusalem, Israel over there on the left, Judah went up and they were taken over into Babylon, which is about 50 miles south of Baghdad, current day, but current present day Baghdad. And so Psalm 107 is written to all those who were captive and in exile in Babylon who had come back and been brought back and redeemed. A beautiful picture. And he says that they've come from the east, west, north, and south. And, and this is fascinating because really the language there means he's talking about four different types of people. How many of you have noticed that you experience exile or captivity or even the pandemic differently than other people? Certain people say things about it. You go, what? Not me. 
And this is fascinating because in Psalm 107, he's going to go through four different people groups, all who experienced exile and captivity and redemption differently. And it's beautiful because here's the deal. If you follow Jesus long enough, you become a part and belong to a community. You get to sing songs with people that are feeling it and songs with people who are going, I'm not there right now. But that's the beauty of being together is that we get to sing songs and rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who weep. We get to learn how to walk with people when we're not in the same space as them. I never really knew much about redemption, what it meant. As I said, when I first gave my life to Jesus, there was a song that we would sing. And I'm not going to sing it, but I'll tell you the words. And it was, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. And I didn't know what most of that meant. But I sang it with a lot of joy. I knew all my sins were washed away. Redemption, redeemed, I didn't really know what that meant. I knew I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what I, you know what I loved as I was thinking about that song this week? And this is a sign of redemption. This is kind of the funny little second verse of that song. Is we sang, you can talk about me. You can talk about me anytime you please but I'll talk about you down on my knees, meaning I'll pray for you instead of giving it back and talking about you. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. (laughs) All I'm saying in that is we need a little bit more. Verse two. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And, and, I want to just underline, say so. He's saying that we need to speak it. We need to sing it. What have you been redeemed from and what are you being redeemed from? Colossians 1 says he's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. See, this, these verses in Colossians tell me and speak to me and speak to us that redemption is about more than just forgiveness of sins and a clean slate. It's about a transfer. It's about this issue almost of ownership, if you will. I'm coming back into living in and under my creator. I'm being re- I've been reconciled to God, and now I'm living out my intended purpose in this life. I was enslaved, and now I'm free. I was thinking about examples of this, and I, I personally was so impacted. About a year ago, the mer- movie Just Mercy that came out. Brian Stevenson, the attorney who went to Alabama who defend. to to defend those who were wrongfully condemned. And specifically, Walter McMillan, who was sentenced to die in 1987 for murder of an 18-year-old girl despite evidence to the contrary. And so it tells that whole story of Stevenson encountering racism, legal and political maneuverings in efforts to free Jamie Foxx. I mean, Walter McMillan. Such a so I just, I watched that story and I, and I really thought, this is so about redemption. Someone's enslaved who's not supposed to be enslaved and supposed to be in family. And if there's any message in that whole movie, it's that evil can be overcome. That should ignite hope in us, no matter where, what it is you're filling in the blank in your own life. Evil can be overcome. So I'd like to just wrap up before we have communion together by leading you in a simple prayer 
Um, that's just from the phrase, using the phrases from Colossians 1. And then I, again, I'm, I'm asking you to join me these next several weeks in praying about this whole theme of redemption and what it really means. Where are you in the journey? And by the way, it's very easy, even after you've been redeemed and set free in an area, to walk back into it. Have you noticed that? I've actually talked to dozens of people during the pandemic that that's been their experience, is that they've actually walked back into a place of captivity that they were free from. And the Lord wants to bring freedom. And not just to you, but he wants to bring it to others that you know and that you care about. So let's put these words up, and then I'm going to lead you in just saying them together with me. And by the way, any sort of prayer like this, if we're praying this from our heart and our, and our mind and we're opening ourselves, God hears this prayer and will answer. So as you read those words, you agree with those? You good with that? You good with that? Everybody in your living room nod? Okay. So together, eyes open, let's pray this together out loud. Deliver me from the domain of darkness. Pause. We're going to pause on every one. Let's start over again. I, lo I love to pause. One more time. Deliver me from the domain of darkness. Transfer me to the kingdom of your beloved son, my redeemer. Forgive all my sins. Show me any area you want to redeem. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Come and bring freedom. Lord, we thank you for your steadfast love. And Lord, we want to speak of your redemption. We want to sing of it. We want to celebrate it. And Lord, even with those in this story who, who went through horrible captivity and then were set free and sang these, this song, Lord, we, we want to sing with others, Lord, and be a part of this story, even though ours might be a little different. We invite you and I invite the power of the redeeming love of Jesus now to just grab hold of your heart and let you know that he is more powerful than anything that enslaves you. In Jesus' name, amen.